Welcome to the FCICA product webinar series. We are pleased to have Mark Penine of Ardex with us today. Mark, the floor is yours. Thank you, Kim. Uh, thank you everyone for taking time out of your day today to learn a little bit more or um, learn something about um, in-floor heating systems and particularly the Ardex Flexbone heat system. The Flexbone heating system is an innovative design for maximum comfort and energy efficiency. It's a three-in-one floor heating system that includes an uncoupling mat, the wires, as well as it can be used as a waterproofing system. It offers maximum heat efficiency, more heat comfort with less energy usage. It's a high quality heat, has high quality heating cables for more efficient, they're easier to install, and there's less cable required. It's also an uncoupling system. It protects tile and grout joints from shear movement in the substrate and also waterproofing, which protects the use in bathrooms, laundry rooms, and wet areas. It's ideal for large format tile and stone installations. And with the Flexbone pre-fill uh, mortar and just one pass, it's very easy to install as well as um, fill the Flexbone mat heat. It's a single source complete system and it's, um, it's available uh, with a comprehensive 10-year system warranty. So the components to the system are the heat mat itself, which is an uncoupling mat. It comes in 134 and a half square feet roll. Um, you have the Flexbone heat power module, the Flexbone heat cables. We have 15 sizes in the 120 volts and we have 19 sizes available in the 240 volts. We have three thermostats. We have a Wi-Fi programmable, we have a touchable programmable, and we have a base model, which is non-programmable. Again, here is an overview of the wires that we offer, both in 120 volts as well as the 240 volts. After 150 square feet of the 124 volt, it's more efficient to move to the 240 volt application. There are four types of flooring products that can be installed over Flexbone heat. You have your normal or usual tile, but also approved wood, approved LVT or approved carpet. And what I mean about approved, that means the manufacturer of that floor covering must ap approve their floor covering to be put over an electrical in-floor heating system. The Flexbone heat can be installed over the following floor substrates, concrete, wood, screeds or mud beds, gypsum flooring, cement backer boards, or even existing tile. It can be used in residential construction. Um, also, it can be used in commercial offices, restaurants, retail stores, again, bathrooms and kitchens, as well as cafeterias. Flexbone roll comes um, again in 134 and a half square feet. It rolls out nice and flat. It's a single source system solution that also includes self leveling as an option to encapsulate the wires. The system also includes our high quality cables. Um, they're not bulky. They fit in between the Flexbone system very nice. They lock in. Um, they don't move around. Um, they're easy to use. And the hot and cold lead is all the same wire. We don't have a bulky connection where you have to cut out the mat and place it into the flooring system. 
it's the same wire, the same connection all the way through. The flex bone effect is filling the mat with just one trial pass. Also, we have these tiny thermal locking layers, which uh, holds the wire off the mat. This allows a full encapsulation of the mortar or self-leveler. It also prevents um, the heat source from heating up the mat. The heat is going to go right into the mortar and then into your floor covering for a more efficient use. And again, it's a single source, 100% system solution that qualifies for a 10-year warranty which include, include your prep, your mat, your leveler, your mortar, and your grout. We offer two applications of our FlexBone heating system. A primary heating, which is most, um, which is most used, which is a 3.88 inches apart of the wires, and then we have a comfort heat, which is 5.82 inches between the wires. Another large advantage of our product over our competitors are the fact that the FlexBone heat mat has very little air pockets in the assembly of the mat itself. So we're heating up the mortar and the towel much quicker and more efficient. And this is an example of the, uh, the output and the usage of our wires and how that, uh, that heat dissipates into the system compared to our competitors. 11% less wattage per square foot compared to our competitors. And we need between 7 and 18% less wire to achieve the same heat. In this slide, it shows you the difference in the FlexBone heat compared to our competitors. After 30 minutes, the FlexBone heat will reach 79.5 degrees Fahrenheit, where our competitors will only reach 77.9. Artex offers a wide variety of products for substrate preparation before installing the FlexBone heat. We have a mud bed or a screed called Artex A38, which is a rapid set screed. It can go over both concrete and wood in an unbonded application. We have a product called Artex AM100, which is a rapid set pre-tile smoothing and ramping mortar for over concrete surfaces. And we have two self-leveling products, Artex Liquid Backer Board for both over concrete and wood, and we have another self-leveling product, TL1000, for over concrete. If minor patching or skim coating is only required, we would recommend the Artex SKM skim coat patch and finishing underlayment, both over concrete as well as wood. We also have a large variety of approved mortars to be used both under and over the flex bone heat. The two self-leveling products that, are, that is approved for um, installing over the flex bone heat are the Artex liquid backer board for towel applications and the Artex K60 for all other flooring applications. When installing the Artex liquid backer board, encapsulating the wires for tile installations, you want to install approximately 3 16 to a quarter inch thickness of material. But when you're installing the K60 
for vinyl, LVT, or other floor types, you want to install at least a half inch of material. Here is a picture of the accessories for these products. Um, we have an edge insulation strip, the Artex UD146, and that goes along the baseboard when you're installing the Flexbone heat. It is not required, but it helps with sand insulation. We have the Artex SK175 seam tape. When you want to waterproof the system, you would use that over all your seams as well as the change of plane from the floor to the wall. And then we have the Artex UD156 moving joint tape. So we still have to honor all expansion joints that are in the existing substrate and bring it through this, um, the Flexbone heat. An easy way to cut the mat is with our Artex Flexbone shears. You can also use a utility knife. Here is a picture of all of our thermostats and our power module. Again, we have a Wi-Fi a programmable thermostat, a touchable programmable thermostat, and a non-programmable thermostat, as well as a power module. The most important process in installing a floor in heat system is the pre-installation checklist and floor plan. You have to map out your installation so you know exactly where the heat wires will, will be placed, so you know the exact quantity or square foot coverage you need to order the appropriate wire for the room. We never want to install wires under furniture, toilets, vanities, anything that's going to cover the floor. So it's very important to map out your room before you order your wires so you get the correct wire um, for your project. This is also required for your warranty. You have to send this in with your warranty paper information. Again, never install electrical heating cables under vanities, bathtub platforms, freestanding bathtubs, kitchen cabinets, islands, solid counters, or other fixtures, or in closets. Excessive heat will build up in these confined spaces and may cause cable overheating. Because of this, there may be differences in the amount of heating cable versus a membrane to take into account when calculating the necessary product quantities. Ensure that all furniture placed over the Flexbone heat cables has bottom ventilation. Non-compliance may lead to loss of warranty due to heating cable damage. Do not run the heating cable under a wall from one room to another. An individual cable must not heat more than one room. The heating section of the cable must be entirely installed under the floor covering. If the temperature regulation of heating circuits takes place by means of more than one thermostat, the Talon stone must be separated by an expansion joint into the field areas corresponding to the heating circuits. Substrate preparation for concrete before installing the flexbone heat. Acid etching, adhesive remover, solvents, and sweeping compounds are not acceptable means of cleaning the substrate. Substrate and ambient temperatures must be a minimum of 50 degrees Fahrenheit or 10 degrees Celsius for the installation of the Artex products. The substrates must be dry during the installation and curing. The substrate also must be load-bearing, flat, and structurally sound. 
Make sure you vacuum all the dust and debris. All substrates must be smooth and flat with the maximum variance of a quarter inch from 10 feet from the required plane per TCNA or TTMAC guidelines, where it's recommended by the tile or stone manufacturer. Level floor prior to the installation of the heat mat. Mortar and level or thickness greater than a quarter inch will compromise the uncoupling capabilities of the mat. So what that means is, if your floor is out of level, you wanna do your self-leveling before you put your mat down. You cannot compensate with your self-leveler on top of the mat because anything over a quarter of an inch will compromise the product as an uncoupling mat. It will no longer be considered uncoupling. The substrate preparation for wood, the wood floor subfloor must be constructed according to prevailing building codes. It must be solid and securely fixed to provide a rigid base free of undue flex. For tile installations, the subfloor must be constructed in accordance with ANSI's L over 360 or ANSI's L over 720 for natural stone. Any board exhibiting movement must be pro properly fastened. The wood must be clean and free of oil, grease, wax, dirt, varnish, shellac, and any contaminant that might act as a bond breaker. If necessary, sand down the bare, to bare wood. A commercial drum sander can be used to sand large areas. Do not use solvents, strippers, or cleaners. Vacuum all dust and debris. Open joints should be filled with Ardex SKM. It is the responsibility of the installation contractor to ensure the wood subfloor is thoroughly clean and properly anchored prior to the installation of the Ardex materials. Exterior gray plywood and OSB subfloors must be either 5 eighths of an inch or 3 quarter inch tongue and groove. Fasten plywood or OSB every 6 inches on center along the sheet ends and 8 inches on center along the intermediate supports with ring shank nails or screws. Allow an eighth inch between sheets. All sheets ends must be supported by a framing member and properly fastened. Any underlayment used on top must be at least 3 eighths of an inch, plug-faced exterior gray plywood or OSB, and fastened every six inches along the sheet ends, eight, eight inches in the panel field with ring shank nails or screws. Again, allow an eighth inch between the underlayment sheets on all edges and ends and a quarter inch at perimeter walls and any abutting surfaces. For installing ceramic or porcelain tile over plywood, if a single layer of plywood or OSB will be installed, a joist spacing of either 16th of an inch or 19th of an inch on center is required. For 16th on center joist spacing, the minimum subfloor nominal thickness must be at least 5 eighths of an inch tongue and groove wood. If using 19.2 on center joint spacing, the minimum subfloor nominal thickness must be three quarters of an inch tongue and groove wood. For 24 inch on center joist spacing, a double layer of plywood or OSB is required. The minimum subfloor nominal thickness must be three quarters of an inch tongue and groove wood, and the minimum underlayment nominal thickness must be three eighths of an inch. When installing natural stone over wood subfloors, two layers of plywood or OSB are required regardless of the joist spacing per TCNA and TT mat guidelines. However, the joist spacing size must not exceed 24 inches on center. The double layer wood flooring must have a minimum subfloor nominal thickness of three quarters of an inch tongue and groove wood, as well as a minimum underlayment on top of a nominal thickness of three eighths of an inch. For highly absorbent substrates, 
such as just gypsum, it must be double primed with Ardex P51 primer. The substrate must be thoroughly clean, free of dirt, debris, sealers, and any contaminant that might act as a bond breaker. If necessary, mechanically clean the floor down to sand solid material by shot blasting or similar. Highly absorbent substrates require two applications of P51. You will make an initial application of P51 mixed with three parts water by volume. Apply evenly with a soft push broom. Do not use paint rollers, mops, or spray equipment. Do not leave any bare spots. Brush off the puddles and excessive primer. Let dry thoroughly one to three hours and install a second application of Artex P51 at a one-to-one -one dilution with water. Allow primer to dry to a clear, thin film, minimum three hours, maximum 24. For joints and cracks, all existing expansion joints and isolation joints and construction joints, as well as moving cracks, must be honored up through the uncoupling membrane and talon stone indicated by TCNA or TTMAC. These joints must also be honored up through the heating cables. Please refer to the cable installation section. Perimeter and field movement joints are essential for door areas, thresholds between rooms, and geometric offset, as well as around walls, penetrations, and fixed objects. You want to install the Artex UD146 edge insulation strip along the walls for rising structural elements and surface penetrations. You want to arrange your perimeter and field movement joints in accordance with the industry standards per TCNA and TTMAC guidelines. Please note that the underfloor heating areas require additional joints, as do interior areas exposed to direct sunlight, such as floors in, in front of floor uh, in front of floor length windows. For areas with heavy loads, expansion joint profiles may be necessary. Contact your expansion joint profile manufacturer to ensure suitability for the intended use. Dormant cracks and dormant joints can be filled with Artex SKM. When installing the FlexBone heat, align the lengthwise edge of the material exactly with that of the adjacent section and ensure that all rolls are placed so that the crossbone pattern have lined up. When the Artex FlexBone heat membrane sections are joined together end to end, the crossbone pattern must form a complete matching unit as shown in the blue circle. The Artex FlexBone heat installation must not exceed beyond the room or area in which it originates. The FlexBone heat must not be installed in closets, over walls, over partitions that extend to the ceiling or over cabinets. When installing the mat, you want to lift the place mat and use the flat side of the trowel to key the approved Ardex mortar to the substrate. Apply the mortar to the substrate using a quarter by quarter square notch trowel, leaving a minimum bed of an eighth inch to three sixteenths. Comb the mortar out over an area no larger that can be covered by the Ardex FlexBone heat membrane during the setting material's open time. If the mortar skins over, it must be completely removed and reapplied. Always mix Ardex borders to the high water ratio when installing the Ardex FlexBone heating mat. Once the mortar has been combed out, Carefully lay the Artex FlexBone heat membrane into the wet Artex setting material with the fleece side facing down and the exposed plastic side up. 
Do not let the material fall as this will trap air beneath the membrane. At the seams, butt the membrane edges up against each other. Then using a float or a flat trowel or a 35 to 75 pound roller, smooth and embed the membrane into the bonding mortar. Gently lift the corner of the membrane to check for proper coverage. Full contact between the fleece and the set material must be achieved. When approaching walls or other obstacles, cut the membrane to the appropriate length using a utility knife or the Ardex Flexbone shears. Leave approximately a quarter inch between the membrane and the edge of the wall or obstacle to allow for expansion. Use the Ardex UD146 edge insulation to create these perimeter joints. Structural expansion joints are formed by separating the Ardex Flexbone heat mat. These joints in the membrane are to be covered with a self-adhesive Ardex UD156 movement joint tape to protect against the entry of mortar and grout. In the case of structural and expansion joints, membranes must be separated to the specified width of at least 3 eighths of an inch. The arrangement of joints in the towel or stone installation must be in line with the separation of the membrane. For waterproofing applications, use the Ardex SK-175 seam tape after the heating cables are installed. Allow the membrane in the mortar course to cure in accordance with the selected mortar technical data sheet. Then install the cables. This product must be installed by a qualified person in accordance with the installation handbook and with the Canadian Electrical Code Part 1 or the National Electrical Code as applicable. All electric connections must be made by a qualified electrician according to the electrical and building codes effective in your region. Unheated zones must be designated prior to the installation and omitted during placement of the heating cables as per the pre-installation plan. This is easily done with blue tape. Prior to the installing the heating cables, test the to total resistance of the heating cables. Any defective cables must be replaced. Conductor resistant test uses a multimeter to test the resistance of the wire, which is major, measured in ohms. Set the meter ohms as in picture one and the selected button to 200. If the resistance rating exceeds 200 ohms, you want to switch the dial to 2,000 ohms. The test one, you want to notice the resistance number on the sticker on the wire of 8.92 ohms as an example in this picture. This number is different for each spool of wire and is dependent upon the voltage, the amperage, and the watts. The value when conducting this test must fall within 10% above this number or 5% below. As an example, with 8.92 ohms for 10% above, it can go to 9.8 and 5% below would be 8.474. In order to perform the resistance test, you must set your multimeter for resistant measurement 
and take an ohms reading between the two power leads. If the ohms reading taken on the two power leads varies significantly, 10% or more, from the value printed on the spool, it means either the cable has been damaged, the, me the measuring instrument is not set properly, or it's simply out of calibration. The ohms measurement must be recorded on your heating cable warranty sheet. The installation of the hot and cold lead. The socket-less transition between the cold conductor cable and the heating cable is denoted precisely and is easily placed into the Ardex Flexbone heat membrane. Heating cables are placed around the crossbones and between the straights. This unique pattern allows for a radial capable, I'm sorry, a, ra a radial cable placement to prevent damage to the cable. Under no circumstances should heating cables bridge any movement joints. If movement joints exist in your installation, different heating areas with separate heating cables must be created. These can be connected to one thermostat using a power module or separate thermostats. When placing the heating cables, the heating cables must be separated so at least two crossbone patterns are between the cables. Again, approximately 3.88 inches apart. Do not shorten or cut the heating cable the heating cables. This will damage the system and void the warranty. There are multiple cable lengths available to fit different installation areas. A minimum space of two inches between the heating cables and wall is required. Heating cables may not cross or touch each other. Ardex recommends a six inch buffer zone from the walls. This buffer zone is gonna allow you room if you have extra wire that you have to use up at the end, you can put it in that area as long as you're, you stay within two inches from the required surface of the wall. You wanna stay eight inches from other heating sources such as baseboard, fireplaces, or heat ducts four inches from plumbing drains, and seven inches from the center line of a toilet drain. You wanna position your floor sensor between the two heating cables. There are two sensors provided with the Ardex Flexbone heat system, one with the thermostat and one with the heating cables. I'm going to press the end of the floor sensor into the membrane. For non-waterproofing installations, a notch can be cut lengthwise into the membrane to accommodate the sensor. Cutting a notch is not required when using an Ardex self-leveling underlayment to pre-fill. Ardex recommends the use of a hot glue gun to secure the sensor wire. At this point, you will then conduct your test two. Remember, this test must be conducted a total of three times during the installation. For waterproofing, in applications requiring waterproofing, all seams in the Ardex Flexbone heat membrane, as well as the floor and wall transitions, must be sealed with the Ardex SK-175 seam tape using an approved Ardex border after the heating cables are installed. The seam tape must overlap these seams and transitions by a minimum of two inches to secure waterproof integrity. This practice may be appropriate in laundry rooms, spaces with ice makers and other areas where an overflow or pipe break may occur. 
You will trial the mortar onto the flex bone heat membrane over the joint areas and over the connecting areas of the adjacent structural components, and then embed the Artex SK-175 seam tape into the mortar. During the tower stone installation, apply a layer of mortar over the Artex SK-1 seam tape. In some cases, the vertical sections of the floor and wall transitions may not be compatible with the bonding of the Artex SK-175 seam tape using a thin set mortar. Connections to these vertical substrates may otherwise be achieved by using the Artex CA20P multi-purpose construction adhesive and sealant. Do not mechanically fasten any material through the Artex Flexbone heat, as this will compromise its waterproofing and uncoupling capabilities. Once the cables have been installed, as well as any seam transition waterproofing needed, pre-fill the membrane using approved Artex mortar. After mixing the appropriate Artex mortar, apply the mortar to the Artex Flexbone heat membrane with the flat side of the notch trowel, keying it in to fill in the membrane cavities. Also, an approved Artex self-leveling unrelayment may be used as an easier, faster pre-fill material that will fully encase the cables. Please contact the Artex Technical Service Department for further instructions. Then comb the additional mortar, wet on one, wet over the pre-filled membrane with the appropriate notch trowel for the size of the towel or stone being installed and directly lay the towel and stone into the mortar. Always follow TCNA and TT Max standards for installation of towel and stone, including the proper transfer or setting materials. Periodically remove and check tower stone to ensure a full coverage. The minimum towel size for installing over flex bone heat is a two inch by two inch towel. Mortar thickness between the top of the Artex Flexbone heat membrane and the towel must not exceed a quarter of an inch. Using the correct notch trowel will provide the proper thickness. Install metal edge transition strips where the towel ends along the bordering or lower lying surfaces. Once the towel installation is complete, it is now time to do the third therm uh, thermostat cable resistant test. Connection of the heating cable and the floor sensor to the thermostat or power module should, should be completed by a qualified electrician. The connecting wire in the transition between the cold conductor cable and the heating cable may be shortened but to no less than three feet. Allow the towel and grout installation to cure prior to turning on the heating mat. Artex recommends waiting seven days before turning on the heating system. Avoid foot traffic during the installation until the mortar has cured. Prior to installing tower stone, Artex flex bone heat cables and membranes should be protected with boards and areas where foot traffic is necessary. Again, allow the tower stone installation to set accordance with the specified mortar and technical data sheet prior to proceeding with grouting the installation. For grouting, Use the Artex FL Rapid Set Flexible Sanded Grout or the Artex FH Sanded Wall and Floor Grout or the Artex WA High Performance 100% Solids Epoxy Grout Adhesive. For all soft and expansion joints, use the Artex SK, I'm sorry, the Artex FX 100% Silicone Sealant for Town Stone applications. Thank you very much, and we will take questions at this time.
All right, thank you, Mark. Um, as we said at the beginning of the presentation, if you have any questions, go ahead and go over to the Q&A tab, uh, click on that, and you can submit them there. Um, we do have a couple sitting here already. Um, so, Mark, you mentioned the uh, thermostats. Can I run multiple cable kits to the same thermostat? You can uh, power multiple cables from one thermostat as long as you do not exceed the 15 amp limit or exceed 80% of the electrical power load. Okay, so how many wires about can be placed on one thermostat? It, it doesn't really matter. It all depends on, again, the, the, uh, the power load, as long as it does not exceed 80%. Okay. Um, and uh, what is the power module that you mentioned? What, uh, what does that function for? It is a relay um, that it provides, um, it's, in, it's in, used in conjunction with, with our Flexbone heat thermostats. The power module is rated at 15 amps and is G, GFCI protected. It is powered by its own independent circuit, not to exceed 80% of the electrical load. Mm -hmm. um, what the power module relay does is it allows you to install multiple wires in a large area um, without putting them all on one thermostat. Um, do those thermostats read ambient air temperature or are they just reading the temperature of the floor? They, they read both. So the thermostats have three settings, floor, the room and floor, or the room. There's a sensor located inside the thermostat that reads the ambient room temperature as needed. Awesome. All right. Um, you mentioned wet applications as well. Uh, can FlexBone be installed in a shower? Yes. The heat can be installed, the FlexBone heat can be installed in a, as a single cable within the shower only using our approved waterproofing guidelines. It also can run from the bathroom floor into a shower for a curbless installation. We always recommend using a linear drain in that circumstance. That's really cool. Um, what about an exterior application? Is it, is it uh, possible to do that? No, exterior is not uh, recommended. It's definitely not a warranted application. We do not recommend anything outside for flexbone heat. Great. Um, we'll give it a minute just in case any last questions come in. Is there anything else you wanted to cover here while we've got you? Um, again, I just want to go over the, uh, the important point of always mapping out your installation before you start um, your project. Uh, even before you order your wires, because the mapping out will determine the exact length or how many wires are appropriate for the installation. Because you have to deduct all the areas that does not get the heat wire. So that is the most important part of starting a project. All right. Sounds good. Um... If people have questions after, maybe they're thinking about it later and they come up with something, should they reach out to you or, or somebody else? Yes, they can reach me um, via email. It is mark.penine at artxamericas.com. All right, awesome. Uh, well, on behalf of FCICA, thank you so much, Mark, for presenting today's webinar as sponsored by Artex. Um, Sims, if you're on the line, you may now navigate to the Submit Credit tab in order to complete the feedback survey and receive your CEU for attending the webinar. Uh, note that you must be signed into the education platform for this feature to work, so if you have any issues with that, just let me know um, and I can uh, help you out with that. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us and have a great rest of your day.